Welcome back. The General Command of the Armed Forces announced on Monday that the Armed Forces have, since 28th of September, destroyed 14 terrorist hideouts, killing 77 terrorists in operations to uproot terrorism. Details. The General Command of the Armed Forces announced on Monday that the Armed Forces have, since 28th of September, destroyed 14 terrorist hideouts and 115 cars, including 9 in the strategic northeastern direction, 52 in the strategic western direction, and 54 in the southern strategic direction. The statement added that 77 terrorists were killed and 65 pieces of weapons of different kinds were seized in addition to explosives ready for use and communication devices in North and Middle Sinai. It added that operations led to the killing of six dangerous terrorists and discovering and defusing 376 explosive devices planted to target forces moving on roads in operation areas. The forces also managed to destroy the two ends of a tunnel in cooperation with the border guards. The statement added that 61 wanted criminals were arrested and legal procedures were launched against them. The statement noted that a large amount of drugs was also seized. The armed forces also managed to foil illegal migration attempts by 4,707 people from different nationalities. The statement said that one officer and two soldiers were martyred or wounded in the operations to uproot terrorism. In the statement, the armed forces vowed to continue efforts in cooperation with the security forces to eliminate terrorism and achieve peace and security for the Egyptian people. Egypt's Vote uh, Voice uh, Summit started on Monday as part of the activities of the second day of the Arab Week for Sustainable Development Forum. The third version of the Arab Week for Sustainable Development kicked off on Sunday under the auspices of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said the Arab Week for Sustainable Development Forum reflects the importance of teamwork and the desire to establish serious partnerships on all levels in order to face economic, social, humanitarian and security political challenges. This came in the President's speech that was delivered by the Minister of Planning and Administrative Reform during the inauguration of the forum. President Sisi said that Cairo is working on providing the basic environment needed to attract investors and encourage the private sector's role in achieving comprehensive and sustainable development. The president said that holding the forum is in line with Egypt's efforts to achieve sustainable development goals through Egypt's Vision 2030. Upon an invitation from the U.S. Administration, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri starts on Monday a visit to Washington to participate in a meeting for the Foreign Ministers of Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia. The meeting that will be held on the 6th of November is due to be attended by the World Bank representatives to discuss the latest developments regarding the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. In a statement, the Foreign Ministry said that Shukri will also hold consultations with the various U.S. parties on means of promoting bilateral relations in all domains, as well as exchanging views on regional and international issues of mutual concern. Since the exhibition of the largest collection of Tutankhamun's treasure was inaugurated Saturday in London, reports about the event and the Great Fair dominated the British press. The exhibition is the first since 1972 when the contents of the tomb of the, tomb, rather, of the boy king have been displayed in London. The display includes more than 150 treasured pieces from the tomb of the young king, 60 of which have never been seen before outside Egypt. The first ever exhibition in London in 1972 attracted 1.7 million visitors. We have the story. Enter the tomb of Egypt's most famous pharaoh, Tutankhamun. London's Saatchi Gallery is filled with treasures from the young king's tomb, from this towering wooden guardian statue to gold jewelry worn by the mummified pharaoh. The gallery opened a new exhibit named Tutankhamun, Treasures of the Golden Pharaoh. This one is celebrating 100 years since the time of the discovery of Tutankhamun. This one, for the first time, Egypt allows this number of artifacts to travel outside the country. They are taking about 150 objects in this exhibit, traveling for the first time. Organizers say the exhibit will explore the meaning of the burial items in the royal tomb. 
60 objects on display are on their first journey outside of Egypt. For many, King Tut is the ultimate symbol of ancient Egypt's glory. Tutankhamun ascended the throne at age 9, ruling until his death at age 18 or 19. The exhibit was assembled to commemorate the upcoming centenary of British archaeologist Howard Carter's 1922 discovery of Tutankhamun's intact tomb and the treasures it held. Carter certainly did find wonderful things. One star artifact in the exhibit is this wishing cup in the form of an open lotus and two buds. Its inscription is particularly significant. It is the end of a very long tour for the young pharaoh. The Ministry of Antiquities said that Egypt is very proud of its heritage and believe that it's humanity's heritage and have to share it with the whole world. This is the exhibit's last stop on a 10-city tour that started in Los Angeles. The previous stop in Paris became the most visited French exhibit of all time, with 1.4 million visitors. A 1972 Tutankhamun exhibit at the British Museum saw almost 1.7 million visitors during its nine-month run, over 7,000 visitors per day. And for more on King Tut's exhibition, we're joined over the phone by Mrs. Yumna Salama, uh, tour guide. And uh, Mrs. Salama is going uh, to update us on the latest headline. This exhibit is actually moving from one country to the other, making records in the number of visitors, whether in Paris now, uh, this is a very special one, special exhibit in London. Ms. Yumna. Hello? Hello. Yes, Ms. Yumna, we are, we are saying that uh, the exhibit of King Tut is making headlines uh, all I'm around sorry, the world. I can, can, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you very well. Can you please? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Better? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, we, we are talking about the exhibit of King Tut. I guess we'll get back to Ms. Yumna Salama as soon as the line is available. And moving forward with our news bulletin, the head of the Iraqi Forensics Department said that three protesters were shot dead overnight during a demonstration outside the Iranian consulate in the holy city of Karbala, south of Baghdad. Protesters hung Iraqi flags on the concrete blocks surrounding the Iranian consulate. Others threw rocks or shot fireworks over the walls into the consulate, then set fire to tires at the gates of the building. And we're still following up on uh, the story yes. of King Tut uh, exhibit that is making records today all over the mm -hmm. world. And we Hello. are joined over the phone by Ms. Yumna Salama. Ms. Yumna, uh, such exhibits of uh, the boy king uh, pharaoh is always dazzling the whole world, mm -hmm. moving from one country to the other, whether it's Paris or London, uh, still uh, the boy king is making headlines. <laughs> yes, Ms. Yumna. Yes. Yes, I can hear you, yes. Yes. I'm with you. So, uh, your assessment of uh, how attractive are those uh, exhibits and uh, attracting millions yes. of visitors around the world? Well, I, I would like to say that King Tut still has a lot to offer, although he has been now, he, uh, since we discovered his tomb in 1922, King Tut still has a lot to offer, and uh, I really think it's very important for the uh, exhibitions of King Tut to move around the world from one place to another because uh, on one side, this is the ancient Egyptian uh, civilization and the ancient Egyptian uh, history that we want to share with all the world. So we need everybody to uh, share this with us. And on the other side, uh, we are looking forward to a great opening for the Grand Egyptian Museum in 2020 which will display for the first time in history complete King Tut. And the last exhibition in France actually uh, had about 166 uh, pieces, and uh, it was stunning. You know that the exhibition was visited by a million and three hundred thousand, almost a million and three hundred thousand visitors before the end of the exhibition, 18 days. So that was a stunning uh, number, and I think this will encourage more people to come and see uh, King Tut complete 
for the first time in history since 1922. Yes, uh, definitely. As you said, the collection is going to be displayed at the Grand Egyptian Muse Museum. And uh, this is definitely very important for promoting tourism, especially uh, also cultural tourism. Uh, the Boy King remains very attractive. What do you think could be the secrets behind this sense of attraction towards King Tut specifically? Well, in my personal opinion, that uh, King Tut is attractive and there is lots of uh, mysterious things still need to be discovered about King Tut, although we have been searching uh, and doing research for a long time. But this young pharaoh who, who, who sat on the throne at the age of nine and died at the age of 18, and it happens that we find uh, among all the tombs at Valley of the Kings, this is the only tomb almost found intact with more than 5,000 pieces. Uh, for, for us, I think, as an Egyptologist, and I'm, I, I have been uh, witnessing the change in theories and the change in opinions uh, among the Egyptologists regarding King Tut. Uh, you know, we have annually uh, a conference for Egyptologists just for King Tut, just it's, it's King Tut exhibition and, uh, and conference, just for King Tut. Yes. So we, uh, we still have a lot to find about him. And I think why he is stunning, why he is uh, attractive, why he is mysterious, for two reasons. The first reason, the discovery of his tomb, uh, as I said earlier, among all the tombs and Valley of the Kings, the only tomb almost found intact. The second reason, King Tut himself as a person. This pharaoh who sat on the throne at a young age, his family, his uh, father, uh, his entire family is a material for studying. He, his father or um, King Akhenaten, uh, believed by some Egyptologists to be his father, by the others, to be his father-in-law. So there is a lot to analyze, and we need to work more in uh, analyzing the DNA of King Tut. 20 yes. years ago, we used to say he was killed by the high priest. But now, after we analyze his DNA, we say King Tut did, did not, uh, he was not killed. He died uh, of uh, blood poisoning of gargarine, and mm -hmm. we discovered that he had one of the, his uh, legs had a deformity. So science will always bring new things to the world about Egypt in general and about King Tut in particular. Uh, definitely, he remains one of our amazing great pharaohs. And today, actually, he was dominating the British press. He's so special, as, as you've said. I thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Yumna Salama, Egyptologist and tour guide for joining Nile TV International and highlighting the story uh, of the day and how uh, King Tut today has been dominating the British press and press uh, around the world. Protesters blocked roads in Beirut and other parts of Lebanon.